Serialization is very useful when it comes to transmitting or persisting any data. There are different kinds of serialization techniques and the one which we should use really depends upon the system and our security requirements. Serialization simply means to convert an object into a stream of bytes or plain text data so it can be either transmitted or stored in any medium. Similarly, deserialization is the opposite of serialization when we convert the serialized data into the source object. This video should be useful for you if you haven't yet worked with serialization, otherwise it should act as a good refresher to your existing knowledge. Also while watching this video, if you think that it is helpful for you, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So before we begin with the code example, let's just first talk about two primary uses of serialization and deserialization. So the most common use is to save any application's state and then reload it later. The idea behind this approach is that we use a single wrapper object to hold any state variable. When it comes to saving the state, then we serialize the entire wrapper object. When we need to restore the state, then we simply deserialize the saved stream and then convert it back to the wrapper object which is meant to hold the state of the application. Other uses are transmitting data over a network in a continuous stream of either binary or plain text bytes. In this short series, I'm going to show you how to serialize any c -sharp object into binary stream or into XML and JSON textual streams. I will also show you how to implement your own custom serialization which is not as difficult as it sounds. So with that, let's begin with the part 1. So the first thing that we need to do is to include the namespaces which we are going to need. We will need the system.io to save the stream into a file and we will need the binary formatter to serialize the object into the binary format. So to begin with, we will first create the class out of which we will create an object which we are going to serialize into the binary format. So let's just create that class, so public class and then person. In this person, I am going to add two properties, public string, let's add a first name with the um, the getter and setters and then let's also add the last name we will need to add an attribute for this class which is called as serializable this will allow us to serialize this class or the object which is made out of this class to add the serialization and deserialization code it would be better if we would write a class wrapper to hold the methods which we are going to use because this would result in less cluttering. So let's just create a class and let's just call it data serializer and now we need to create two methods in it. First one is for the serialization of the object and the second one is to deserialize it. So for serialization let's create a public void and then binary serialize because we are going to first serialize in the binary format and this is going to accept the argument for the um, the object which we are going to serialize and we are going to save the stream into a file so let's just fetch the path of the file too let's call it file path now in this method what we need to do is first we need to check if the file exists or not if it does exist then we need to delete it first and then we will create a new file and then we need to serialize the object which is being provided as an argument and then finally we will close the file so let's first create the file stream which we are going to use to open the file and now let's also create the binary formatter object let's just call it bf so the first thing which we need to do actually not the first thing but first we need to check if the file exists or not so if file dot exists and we will use the file path argument then we need to delete it so file dot delete and then file path now after we have deleted any existing file then we can create a new one so file stream equals to file dot create and then we are again going to use the same file path which has been provided as an argument so and then we can serialize the object and we can then use this file stream to save the serialized data into the file which we have just created so file stream and then we need to provide the data which is being serialized and then finally we can close the file so file stream dot close 
and that's pretty much it to serialize an object and then save it into a file in the binary format. So deserialization is just going to be the opposite of what we did here. First we just need to check if the file exists or not. If it does then we are going to use the same binary formatter class to deserialize the binary stream into an object. So let's just first create the public method and it is going to return an object and let's just call it binary deserialize and this is going to accept the argument for the file path so file path again so now let's just first create an object which we are going to return and initialize it with a null value and let's just return it for now so after that we can again create the file stream and then let's create another binary formatter now if the file path which has been provided points to a valid file so if file dot exists then we can go ahead and use this binary formatter to deserialize the file but first we need to open the file first so file stream equals to file dot open read and then provide the path which is file path and then we can fetch the object by using binary formatter dot deserialize and then provide the file stream as an argument and then finally we can close the file stream close the file and that's pretty much it to deserialize the saved binary stream into an object and now it's time to test our code to test the code the first thing that we need to do is to create a person object and then create a new object from the data serializer class and then what we can do is we can simply call these two methods one by one and then we can print on the console the objects properties which has been deserialized using the stream which was saved in the file so first let's just have the object for the person and we can set the values for the first name and last name with some dummy values next we can have a file path or a file name so um, what i'm going to do is let's just call the file as data.save and then let's create an object for the data serializer actually data serializer equals to new data serializer and then let's have another person object let's call it p because we are going to deserialize the binary stream into this object let's just initialize it with a null okay so it's time to first serialize this person object for that we can call data serializer dot binary serialize provide the person object as an argument and also the file path next we can deserialize this stream into the person p so for that let's call this data serializers um, binary deserialize method and we can provide the file path from which it is going to read the binary stream which is going to be deserialized and now to test if it has been deserialized correctly what we can do is we can write console.write line and then let's first write the first name and then the last name so p.firstname and then p.lastname so you can see that the first name and last name are being printed over here this simply means that our code is correctly serializing and deserializing the data let me just also show you the file contents in which we are saving the serialized stream so this is the file which has been created and i'm just going to open it in notepad and this is the serialized content it is kind of gibberish kind of readable but yeah this is what happens when we are not using a plain text format to serialize the object so this is it for part one guys and in the next parts i'm going to show you how to serialize and deserialize the object using the xml serializer and also using the json format and later i'm going to show you how to implement our own custom serializer 
so stay tuned for the next part and if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area if you still haven't liked the video then please like it if you haven't already subscribed to this channel then please go on and hit the subscribe button and you will be the first to know about latest video updates i will see you in the next one till then have a great day